is this? Let me just share my own testimony and what the Lord Jesus have done for me on the cross of Calvary and how much the grace of God has changed my life. And I want to share my testimony, who I was before this. Maybe some of you who are listening to me, you only know me as Pastor Benjamin, but you do not know what was my background, where I came from and who I was before, before the Lord found me. And where I came from, what was my, my lifestyle, you do not know. But let me share with you who I was before the Lord Jesus found me. I always say the Lord Jesus found me because it's not me who come to Him. He lovingly came to me. He picked me up from that miry clay. He picked me up from that, from that dark place that I was living. And He changed my life. And today, by His grace that I'm speaking to you in front of you. This is my testimony. This is my story. Listen carefully to me. When I'm born, I'm born with speech and inadequacy. That means I can't speak well. I'm a stammering person. I'm a stutterer. I could not speak well. You know, like Moses, he could not speak well. So I'm born with speech inadequacy. When I want to say a word, not a sentence, just a word, my whole body will be shaking. So when I'm born, I'm born with this, this problem. And not only that, I'm born in the family that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. I came from a different faith. And I was a staunch believer of that faith that I was in. But today, praise God. God found me and God, sent, God saved me. So when I'm born, I'm born with this speech issue. And because of my speech issue, I, I grew up with a very low self-esteem and I was rejected by many people around me. When I was around two or three years old, because of my father's occupation, my father and my mother have to leave me in my relative's house. So the first few years of my life, two years old or three years old or four years old, I was living with my relative. Of course, when you live not with your own parents, you live with your relative, the treatment and the life that you will go through, it will be totally different. Will never be the same way that you will, uh, the love that you will receive from your own parents. It will be totally different. Amen. So I grew up in a very young age with such a fear in my heart because of the harsh treatment sometimes, because of the strictness there, because of all that I've been through in that young age. I was so broken, even in the young age. Then after a few years, my mom took me back from my relative's house and I start to, you know, start to grow in my own family. But when I was in standard one, that's where all the real issues start to come into my life because of my stammering issue. And people around me start to ridicule me. People start to imitate the way that I talk. In my whole life, I only face hard time. I only face rejection. I face so much of emotional pain in me. I grow up with emotional pain. Just imagine and see, even when I was uh, 16 years old or 17 years old, my teachers, some of my teachers, when they know that I am a stammering person, they will ask me to stand up and read in front of the class. Just imagine and see, I can't even say one word and I will be standing there and I will be just crying. Tears will just, you know, just coming up from my, from my eyes and I will be in tears standing there and the whole class will be laughing at me just for the pleasure of that laughter of the people and the teacher. And I went through such brokenness. So I avoided people. I don't dare to face people and talk to them, not even one person. So... Because of that, I was so poor in my education and I can't even speak English. I couldn't speak in English. I don't understand this language and my English was totally zero. I can't even speak in English, can't even write in English, can't even spell in English. And I was so poor in my education. So brothers and sisters, from standard one all the way to form five, which is 17 years old, I never passed one exam and I failed all my exams. And when I failed the most important exam, examination in Malaysia, we call it SPI, I failed in 17 years old. So because I failed, I could not further my studies to, uh, 
to college or to form six or to do anything. So I was laughing another two years until the age of 19. That time I was involved. As I mentioned to you, I came from a different faith and I was involved heavily in that different faith. I was a young priest in the temple serving in the temple as a young priest and i do not know the lord jesus christ that time so in the age of 19 my own dad came to me and he spoke to me and said hey you have nothing in your life and you have four sisters and all your sisters are very good in uh, in their education they are successful and what's going to happen to you then my father suggested to me why not you move to another town and that town there is one school uh, they are specialized in Form 6 But in that school There's one class For the repeat Repeat case For the failures To come into the school And to repeat the Form 5 That they failed before So because my father said Ask me to repeat my Form 5 And I left the two years From 17 until 19 I didn't do anything So 19 years old I went back to school again Went to that class I saw around 40 students in that class Everyone was a failure because they failed their SPM the year before. So as I went into the class, I was very happy because these are my group of people. I said, these are the failure club. We cannot change the fact and we're going to fail again this year. That's what I was thinking. So I sat in that class. Next to me, there's one Chinese student. And this Chinese boy was so bright student. He's a smart student. He's brilliant. But I couldn't understand why the year before he failed. And I start to ask him and say, how come you fail and you, when you are so smart and you are so brilliant? And today I have a perfect understanding why that Chinese boy have to fail and have to sit there for me. Because he was the first one who invited me to church. He's the first one. So brothers and sisters, when he invited me to church, I never been to church. But on that 19 years, when my friend, he invited me to, to church, I, I said, all right, I will come. So I went to church on that Sunday. And this church, that period of time, the church don't have a permanent pastor. They always invite guest speakers. So I went, then only I found out it was an English service. And you know, I don't know English. I can understand, I can't even understand one word of English. So I was sitting there and this pastor was preaching. I don't even understand what is he saying. And as, as, as the service was going on, I was thinking to myself, what am I doing here? I don't even understand what this man is saying. But at the end of his message, he says something. He said a beautiful phrase. And this pastor mentioned from the pulpit, he said, Jesus is the only true God. And when I heard that, and I, for the first time in my life, suddenly I understand that phrase. I understand what he is saying. I got understanding of that English sentences. I say, how come I suddenly understand English? And then I finished the service. I went back. I went back to my, you know, to my hostel and all. And then I went back again for the next three weeks. That means the first week, and I went on the second week, third week, fourth week. All the four weeks, they brought in different speakers. All the different pastors, they came and spoke. So as I went to all the services, the same thing happened. I don't understand what those pastors are saying from the beginning until the end, but all the pastors, the four pastors, they mentioned the same thing at the end of their message. And all of them mentioned, Jesus is the only true God. And I get confused. And I say, how come all the four person, they do not know each other. And I don't understand from the beginning until the end of message. But at the end of the message, these one sentences, I begin to understand that Jesus is real. Jesus is the true God. Then what happened? What's going on? Then on the fourth week, when I heard that verse, I was offended. I was offended because I'm from a different faith. And I say, Jesus is the only true God. How about my faith? Then I went to my friend who invited me to, to church. I say, hello, my friend, look here. I'm not going to come to church anymore. And we are no longer friends. And I told them that because I don't want all this because I get offended. So I left the church. I left my friend on the fourth week. But on the fourth week onwards, 
the phrase in my mind, the phrase that it, those pastors mentioned, Jesus is the only true God, was hunting me. Whatever I do, wherever I go, the phrase will come. I became so disturbed in my spirit. I became so disturbed. I couldn't do anything. I said, what's happening to me? Why this phrase keep coming to my mind? So on the fourth week, uh, sorry, on the fifth week, I decided not to go to church because I already told my friend and I walk away from the church. But I decided to visit my mom in another town. So on that Sunday, on the fifth Sunday, around 8.40 p.m. And uh, the cloud is, you know, it's already dark. And uh, on that day, there's a bright moonlight, very big full moon. And that moon, because of the moon is so full and so bright, you can see the entire sky. So I start my journey from this town where I was studying. I start my bike. I was riding bike that time. So I start my bike and I start to journey to my my hometown to visit my mom as i was riding bike on that night where the moon was so clear the sky was so bright these words keep coming to my mind that sentences jesus is the only true god so as i was riding and i look up to the sky i asked this question to the lord jesus that was the first time i'm asking him from my heart with all my heart i ask him this i say lord are you the only true god when I asked that, what happened next changed my life. When I asked that question, the Lord Jesus appeared on the sky. And I saw the Lord Jesus on the sky. You see, I do not know about the Bible that time. You know what I saw? I saw a huge cross. If you put the Twin Tower, Malaysian Twin Tower, you put 50 of them, 100, 100 together, you stack up all, it's still small. Because I saw a huge cross and I saw the Lord Jesus hanging on the cross and I saw the Lord Jesus wearing a crown on his head and I saw so clearly on that sky and Jesus appeared on that sky to me and Jesus revealed himself to me just because I asked that question to him I said, are you the only true God? And he appeared in front of me and he showed himself to me and I saw he is on that cross and I heard a voice from that sky, Jesus said to me, I died for you. Hallelujah. I heard, I can still, I still remember those things happened around 22 years ago. I saw Jesus on that sky and I heard a voice. Jesus said, I died for you. You know, when I saw him on that sky, I was frightened. I was so afraid. Because this is the first time I'm seeing God, I'm seeing Jesus face to face on that sky. Jesus showed himself to me. And I was so afraid. Then something happened. After that encounter that I had in my life with the Lord Jesus, face to face encounter with the Lord Jesus. The next day I went to school. Brothers and sisters, for the first time in 19 years, as I enter the class, I have a desire to study. And before that, I have no desire. And I was so poor in my, in my, in my education and I failed all my subject. But after that encounter with the Lord Jesus, I went to my class in that failure class. As I sit there, there's a burning desire, a burning passion in my heart to study. So when I check the calendar, I have six months to sit for my SPM. Then when I start to study, I couldn't understand anything what the syllabus is saying in Form 5 because I left Form 1, I left Form 2, I left Form 3, I left Form 4. I don't have any basic. So I was wondering, well, how am I going to do this? And the Lord, you see, four weeks I was in the church before that and I heard how people are praying. So I start to talk to Jesus, even though I don't want to go to church, I start to talk to him in my room. And I will talk to him. I say, I saw you. I know you are real. Can you help me? How to do this? I have a passion now. I have a desire to study, but I don't know how. And I have no one to teach me. Then there's an idea came to me because from, for in that school, I was study from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. Then the idea came. I believe the Lord is the one that gave me this wisdom, this idea. From 2 o'clock until 6 o'clock, I went and registered myself in Form 1 tuition, Form, form 2 tuition, Form 3 tuition, Form 4 tuition. All the tuitions, I go register myself. 
for all the important subjects. And I went to Form 1 tuition because that's the basic that I need to know to, to do my Form 5. So first time I entered the Form 1 tuition, I'm 19 years old that time. Form 1 people, they are, they are only 13. I already have my beard and everything. They are only kids. When I went to Form 1 class, the teacher thought somebody's brother came into the class and they thought that, you know, I was looking for somebody. And I told the teacher I want to study because I don't know the basic. And the teacher was shocked. And the teacher allowed me to sit there and study. So I will sit at the back of the class and study for six months, from one, from two, from three, from four, and from five. And then after six months, I sat for my exam. And brothers and sisters, after the exam, the result came. First time in my life, the result came. That time I'm already 20. First time in my life, I passed my exam. And I was shocked. And everyone around me was shocked. Even my family members were shocked. Because they know who, who I was before. They were so concerned about me. They were worried about my future. So I passed my Form 5. Then the same school, because as I mentioned to you, this school is specialized in Form 6. Then the same school gave me a place to study for Form 6. So I studied my lower 6 and my upper 6 in that school. And I finished my, uh, and then when I finished my upper 6, I sat for my exam. It's one of the difficult exams in Malaysia, Form 6. And I sat for the exam, I studied, I talked to Jesus, and I will say to him, I saw you, I know you are real, can you help me? That's all, that is my prayer. Nothing much, because I don't know him that much. Then, I sat for my exam. After I sat for my exam, after three months, the result came. I have an excellent result in my Form 6. Then after two or three months, I received a letter from the, from the Malaysian, uh, Malaysian government that they give me a place. I got a place to enter university, government university. If you want to enter a Malaysian government university, <clears throat> you must have a good result. Without a good result, you cannot enter a Malaysian government university. You see, brothers and sisters, when I was lost in the world, when I was living in that darkness, when I was rejected by the world, I was rejected and I was given up. Even at one point, my family was given up on me because they do not know what to do with me. But Jesus came in the age of 19 and He reached out to me. And He was so kind to me. He was so good to me. He was so compassionate to me. And He loved me so much. And His love, His grace, His goodness leads me to repentance. And I was zero in the world. But God came, Jesus came, picked me up, cleansed me and changed me. Then when I got the place for university, I went to university. As I went to university, the Lord Jesus came to me again. And he reached out to me through some students. And I ended up in the church. And I began to grow in the Lord. Then I fully follow him with all my heart. And God changed me and changed me and molded me and changed me. And I was so in love with Jesus because knowing that Jesus loves me so much. I tell you brothers and sisters, I never experienced such a love in my life before. All those years before the Lord Jesus came into my life, I only faced rejection and pain and hurt. But the moment the Lord Jesus came into my life, He transformed me, He changed me. You know, I want to say this with all my heart. It was gr God's grace. It is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that transformed me, that changed me, that touched my life, molded me. Today, I'm standing in front of you because of our Lord Jesus Christ and the finished work on the cross of Calvary. Brothers and sisters, today I'm standing in front of you. It is because of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross of Calvary. It is His goodness that leads me to repentance. Hallelujah. I give all glory to Him, all praise to Him because I know where I came from. I have nothing in my life those days. I was zero. In fact, not zero. I was below zero. That means I'm negative. 
People around me rejected me and given up on me. But Jesus never gave up on me. You see, brothers and sisters, as I mentioned to you, I can't even speak in English, can't even write in English. But when the Lord Jesus came into my life, I have a desire to study. Then I have a passion to learn English, to speak in English. And I spoke to him. I asked him, Lord, will you teach me? Will you teach me how to speak? And today, brothers and sisters, by the grace of God, I'm standing in front of you. I'm speaking to you about the goodness of God, about the mercy of God, about the love of God in English language. Once in my life, I could not speak in English, but today God enabled me to speak. And not only that, after some time the Lord Jesus came into my life, He healed me from that stammering issue. He totally healed me from that stuttering issue. And today, those people that knew me before, when they heard me speaking, they are surprised and they are thinking there must be a God because this guy who was so lost, who was so broken, now standing up in front of people and speaking in front of people. Brothers and sisters, God has started a crusade ministry in my life. For the past three years, I have been ministering in crusade. And God is taking me around the world now. And I'm speaking about the mercy of God. I'm speaking to people. I'm telling people what the Lord Jesus spoke to me when I saw him on the cross of Calvary. Jesus said, I died for you. That is the message that I carry in my heart to the entire world. Wherever God sent me, wherever Jesus leads me, I will speak to the people that Jesus died for them. So brothers and sisters, listen carefully. The Lord Jesus died for you. The Lord Jesus gave up His life for you because of His kindness and His mercy, His grace in your life. You will never be the same person anymore. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, grace is powerful. Grace can transform people. Grace can change people. And I am the evidence of that. The grace of God changed me. And today I'm standing in front of you testifying about the goodness and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as Paul mentioned, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, I would like to mention the same to you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen, brothers and sisters. Be blessed. God is so good. God is so merciful. And His goodness will lead us to repentance. So brothers and sisters, I will come back to you with many more sharing about this topic, about this series. And continue to listen, continue to know God, continue to know Jesus' heart for you, His love for you, His grace for you. Amen. So brothers and sisters, you take care. You have a blessed day. God bless you. Bye-bye.